Okay, these are the things that according to the Bible have to happen first before the rapture. Now, when I say the rapture, I'm talking about the harvest of the earth in Revelation chapter 14, 14. All right. Here's what has to happen before the rapture. And I'm going to go quickly and I'm going to give you scripture references. If you want to read your Bible, get your Bible out. One, the gospel has to go out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Jesus said that in Matthew 24, and it's also in Revelation chapter 14, 6. After the gospel is out, Babylon the Great falls. Babylon the Great has to fall before the harvest of the earth or before the rapture. In 2 Thessalonians, it says, That day will not come until first there be a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. <clears throat> so, the rapture cannot occur until the great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. That's talking about the Antichrist. <clears throat> then, the Bible also says, that the mark of the beast comes out before the rapture. Okay? That's Revelation chapter 14. Okay? We see a clear timeline. I believe that when the mark of the beast comes out, that is what causes the great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. Just before the harvest of the earth, in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, now here's something that happens just before the, the, the rapture. Are you ready for this? By the Holy Spirit, let him who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And here's what the Lord is going to say. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. When that prophecy comes forth, first of all, it only comes forth after the mark of the beast, but before the harvest of the earth. So here's the timeline. The gospel goes out to every nation, every language, every tribe, every people. Then the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the great falls, which is also the day of the Lord. Read your Bible. It talks about the day of the Lord in, I believe, 1 Thessalonians or 2 Thessalonians. Read the whole book. They're not that long. They're only four or five chapters each. So, after the gospel goes out, Babylon the Great falls, then the mark of the beast comes out, then there's great persecution, a great falling away, the man of sin is revealed, and then God says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Then there's a number of saints put to death for their faith. That's Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. And then after that number is complete, the harvest of the earth, or the rapture. Now, nobody knows the day or the hour. Okay, I'm not going to stand here and try to tell you, but I can tell you it's not going to happen until these things happen first. And what I've been saying about September 23rd, 2015 is the first step is accomplished. The gospel is out. You might even just say, as of right now, from the point that you see this video, the gospel is out to every nation, every language, every tribe, and every people. I mean, I watched a documentary about how in the 80s, there were missionaries sent to the remote little islands in Papua New Guinea. And in the 70s, there were people, there were missionaries sent to the remote rainforest regions of Colombia and Brazil. <laughs> I'm just saying, the gospel is out. And if it hasn't got out, it will by the, by the time you watch this video. Let's just say it that way. And what I proclaim is there's so much hoopla about September 23rd, 
2015. Well, if anything, the first, listen, the, heart, the rapture is not going to happen until these things happen first, okay? So I'm going to give you a quick, based on my understanding of what the Bible says, a rundown. One more rundown. One, the gospel goes out to all the world. Two, the hour of God's judgment comes, Babylon the Great Falls, which is a thermonuclear attack on America. Once America is taken out of the way, the government to establish itself will be the government of the Antichrist, and the mark of the beast will come, come out. Now, when that happens, two things will happen. There will be a great falling away, and that will also reveal for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, no more theories, no more thinking about it, no more wondering. It will be for sure the Antichrist, and we will know, and it will be revealed. About the same time the mark of the beast comes out, there's 144,000 men who are sealed with the seal of God on their forehead. And at about that same time, there will also be a seven-year peace agreement with Israel. And that'll start the seven-year, 42-month period. So when the mark of the beast comes out, there's going to be three things that happen at about the same time. The mark of the beast comes out, a seven-year agreement with Israel, and the 144,000 are sealed. Okay? That starts then. There's great persecution. Great falling away, and and then the Lord is going to say, maybe a year, maybe three years later, maybe, we know it's 42 months, but let's say at 30 months, after 30 months after the mark of the beast first comes out, how long is it going to take for them, when, when the mark of the beast first comes out, for them to actually enforce that worldwide? I say it's going to take them 42 months. Then the Lord, at some point in there, God's going to say, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And also at that same time, God's protection over those are who are holding out and remain faithful to Jesus and have not taken the mark of the beast, that protection will wane. And all of a sudden, you're going to have many Christians who are actually put to death for their faith. Once that number is complete, then there's going to be a harvest. In other words, the rapture is going to happen. Okay? And there's going to be Christians who are in captivity. There are going to be Christians who are hiding out in the wilderness who will then be taken. Once that harvest of the earth or rapture happens, they're not going to have anything to do except for focus their attention back on Israel. So in other words, that first 42 months, they're going to be focused on, on getting the mark of the beast out and getting rid of all the Christians. Once that happens, once the Christians are taken out, they're going to say, okay, we're done with that job. Now let's let's go take care of Israel. That's what I believe is going to happen. That's how I believe it's going to play out. Now, the 144,000. When the harvest of the earth happens, the 144,000 will not be raptured up. But they will have such a supernatural protection and power on them, and they will prophesy. And what will happen is, one by one, that 144,000 will be put to death for their faith after the harvest of the earth. After the Christians are taken out, there's going to be that 144,000 left. Then, as they're put to death, they're going to kill all of them, but there's going to be two guys left standing. Two left, two dudes out of that 144,000, which are going to continue to prophesy for the full fullness of of the remaining 42 months, and these are the two witnesses of Revelation, and the only people who, there's going to be people who get saved, but they're going to be in the city of Jerusalem, and they're going to be, there's going to be an earthquake, and, and some will repent at the preaching of the two witnesses. But for the most part, the inhabitants of the earth, first of all, there's no left behind. Nobody's going to suddenly get saved after the harvest of the earth, okay? The people who are left behind have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. They have taken the mark of the beast. They curse God. They're just wicked. And it's the 144,000 and the two witnesses who are proclaiming God's word and proclaiming 
all the curses that we see in Revelation chapter 16 and in Revelation, in the book of Revelation where we see the seven trumpets and, you know, the, the, the oceans and the springs of water are turned to blood and hail mixed with blood is, is cast down. And the Bible says, do not harm those who have the seal of God on their forehead. So when those curses come out from God, the witnesses and the 144,000 are going to walk right through that without even being touched, but they will yet be proclaiming, this is the wrath of God, and I'll tell you what's going to happen next. God is going to rain down hail and fire and blood, and they'll proclaim it for maybe, let's say, five days. They're proclaiming, this is what God's going to do next, and then five days later, it starts to happen. And they prove that they're sent from God, Anyway, just saying, that's how I believe it's going to happen based on my understanding and also revelation, visitation from God, and visions from the Lord. Now, I'm not saying I'm 100% perfectly accurate, but based on what I've read and what I see, that's how I believe it's going to play out. And um, sometimes I can confidently say, I know that God said this. For example... I know that I know that God told me a sc the sky rolled up like a scroll is a mushroom cloud caused by a nuclear strike. I know Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 is a nuclear attack, a worldwide nuclear attack that starts with an earthquake and it ends with a time of no wind. Revelation chapter 6 starting in verse 12 going down to chapter 7 verse 1. I know the Lord told me that, and he also told me that that's the day that Babylon the Great falls, and it is officially the day of the Lord. But that's not the end. That's the beginning of the Antichrist taking control of the world. So when that happens, you can sit back and say, okay, we got about seven years. If, if not three and a half years. Just saying. So... Praise God, Jesus is the Lord. The Bible says, seek God and live. It says, do not go down to Gilgal. Do not go to Bethel. In other words, don't go to the meeting place of God. It says, do not seek victory. Do not seek the meeting place of God, but seek God. Seek Jesus. Worship the Lord and put him first, the creator of all things, the king of kings and lord of lords. Put God first. Have your heart right with God. And don't think for one minute that after the harvest of the earth, after the rapture, that you're going to have a chance to repent. You're not. The door is closed. And unless you're one of those 144,000, forget about it. Matter of fact, just the fact that you even knew of God and thought you could put him off until and say, I'll repent someday after I hear about the rapture. Come on now, please. God knows your heart. You who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. Praise God. I'm trying to make shorter videos. 13 minutes already. So much for that. Might as well go 20. So listen, keep your heart right with God. Fall in love with Jesus. That's the only way to know for sure is that you just love God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that when persecution comes, many will fall away. The Bible says that five were wise and five were foolish. The Bible says, you who are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you up. And if you look at all the false teaching in the church today, and they're all teaching that the rapture is going to happen first, and then the mark of the beast is going to come out, and they're teaching that because they don't want to have to go through the trial. And if anybody's going to be spared from the trial and from the, from the mark of the beast coming out, it'll be when, when Babylon the Great falls, nuclear attack, many will die on that day. And if you're a Christian and you end up being vaporized in the mushroom cloud of a nuclear strike, then you've got the easy way out. Let me just say it that way. And if, if God says, I will spare a certain number of Christians from the hour of trial that's going to come upon the earth, Revelation 3.10, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about being vaporized in, in the nuclear strike that happens 
after the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, the hour of God's judgment comes, and Babylon the Great falls. All right, so praise God. Keep your heart right with the Lord, and be ready. Keep your Keep your lamp trimmed and burning, waiting for the bridegroom. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and seek God. Worship Jesus and keep God first in your life.